Hi, welcome on Things to Consider. Today we're going to consider uh, some of the factors in using vortex tubes to cool. In my right hand, I have a vortex tube. The way it works is it takes compressed air, spins it one way inside itself to one direction, then spins it back inside itself the other way. This end gets hot, the other end gets very cold, and that cold air can be used for spot cooling or cooling enclosures. So what are the things you have to really consider? First of all, what is the temperature that you really get that is usable? When you see vortex tubes promoted and specifications on them, they give you the temperature right at the inside of the vortex tube. So let's say you want minus 40 degrees Celsius or 40 degrees Fahrenheit on the inside of a vortex tube. The actual temperature you're going to get at the point of use is going to be higher because as soon as that cold air comes out, it's combining with the surrounding atmosphere. It's going to be affected by the surrounding atmosphere. So the actual temperature that's usable is going to be much higher. So if it's minus 40 in the inside, you might be only using minus 30 at the actual point of use, maybe even minus 20, depending on how hot the temperature is on the outside and other factors. Secondly, in an open area, the distance from the vortex tube to the cooling point does make a difference. This is an adjustable spot cooler. It's basically a package vortex tube. I have the flexible hose at the end of it. As the cold air comes out of the vortex tube system, goes through that flexible tube, again, it will start to warm up because of the surrounding atmosphere. As that distance gets longer, it's gonna warm up more. So you have to consider how far the distance is. To really keep the temperature as cold as possible, you want to maximize that distance from the vortex tube to about six inches. Any more than that, it's going to start warming up more. So that's one thing to consider is that distance. And not only the distance, but also the inside diameter of the delivery tube. If that inside diameter is too small, you're going to create a back pressure, and that will affect the performance of the vortex tube. So you want to minimize the uh, the back pressure from the inside by maximizing the internal diameter and minimizing the distance from the vortex tube to the point of use. Another thing to consider is the dew point of the compressed air going into the unit. And if the temperature of the compressed air falls below the dew point in the vortex tube, you're going to get some ice forming because what happens is a little bit of moisture will condense out of the compressor system. On the inside of the vortex tube, if it's below zero, it, it's going to freeze. And that actually stops the vortex tubes for a moment. You can actually have intermittent operation, and we've seen this happen quite often. So, you, so for most applications in spot cooling and in applications for enclosure cooling, we actually try to keep the compressed air at a temperature of zero degrees or around zero degrees. This way you don't get this uh, freezing on the inside of the unit. If it's much colder than that, you're going to have freezing and you're going to have intermittent uh, operation of the unit, which is what we don't want. Um, the other way, of course, if you really are dealing with very, very cold temperatures and you want very, very cold temperatures well below zero, it's best to use uh, compressed air that has a dew point that is going to be equal to or lower than the coldest temperature produced inside the vortex tube. And finally, using it to cool enclosures, is humidity and condensation a problem? The biggest question that comes up in using uh, vortex tube technology for cooling enclosures, in particular electrical control panels, and I have a, a panel cooler in my hand, is, is there going to be condensation inside that control panel? No, you just will not have that happen as long as the panel is closed. And here is why. If I have a compressor supply going into the panel cooler, even if that compressed air is full of water, it's fully saturated, as long as I have a filter to effectively remove that moisture, that air that goes inside starts to go back to close to atmospheric pressure. And all you have to do is check this out using a psychometric chart, and you will see this, is that the compressed air, the humidity is 100% going in, possibly, but it will be no more than 40% absolute maximum relative humidity inside the control panel. So you will not get condensation. And what's really interesting when you look at it another way is that you can actually use the units not only to cool in air condition, you can control humidity. So even if 
you have uh, not that cooling is not an issue in a control panel. If humidity in the surrounding area is a problem, then these are ideal for controlling humidity as well. As long as the panel is closed and the outside air does not get in, because the inside of the panel will be at a slightly positive pressure from the compressed air going into the control panel. So in summary, the temperature you really get has to be considered uh, because it's not going to be the temperature that vortex tube necessarily makes, so it's going to be a little bit higher. In an open area, the distance from the vortex tube is going to make a difference, as well as the inside uh, diameter of the delivery tube. The dew point you have to be aware of. And finally, you do not have to worry about humidity and condensation on a panel.